We love our brothers and sisters. We love our minds. We love our hearts. We love our souls. And we love our minds. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah Yahweh. Hallelujah Yahweh. What is our motto? Our motto is one God, one mind, one love, and one action. We're all for one. And one for all. And we want for our brothers and sisters. What we want for ourselves. What about soup? If I have a bowl of soup, you may have half my bowl of soup. And anything else? And anything else. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah Yahweh. You may be seated. Welcome to Day of Atonement, 1990. The season of the Feast of Tabernacles is upon us. Get ready. The Day of Atonement is all about becoming at one with Yahweh. The Day of Atonement is the day appointed for a yearly perfect expiation for all the sins and uncleanliness and uncleanness that has taken place during the year. The Day of Atonement is a most solemn expression of faith and worship developed by Yahweh, who is the merciful and uh, as a medium of beneficence and love. The Day of Atonement is a tremendous moment of renewal that permeates all Israel and unites us in a solemn joy. And of course the Day of Atonement is not a time where we run around with a festive attitude but a repentant mind. Although it is a repentant period, Yahweh lets us know that we are not to walk around with a face of sadness. For this is also a period of no food from sundown Saturday until sundown Sunday. 24 hours of no food in any manner. Some people, when they know the Day of Atonement is upon them, will seek to stock up, as it were, eat in abundance, try to make <laughs> try to make up for this day of food that is lost. And the closer that sundown for the Day of Atonement becomes, the more desperate we become about food. The more conscious we are of sundown. Sundown suddenly takes on a special significance. Very special indeed. And people are ready to do strange things to the Shabbat because of no food for the next 24 hours. Some of us don't need food for the next. Day of Atonement for some could be extended a while without any loss of anything but perhaps pride. 
and the idea of starving to death in a 24-hour period. Even our children are to be without food until sundown tomorrow night. And, and there's, there's one thing about going without food for 24 hours. It makes you say, Yahweh. <laughs> you may not be too conscious about Yahweh tonight. But about noon or early afternoon tomorrow, somewhere about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, even as late as 5 o'clock, it will seem to you as if the sun is never going to set. <laughs> you begin to wonder if this is the day of Joshua. <laughs> Where you begin to say, oh, Yahweh, don't let the sun set still for another day. <laughs> yes, Day of Atonement will make you thankful. grateful for food. It will humble your hearty spirit and suddenly the name Yahweh becomes real and you don't seem to forget it. The more time that goes with this, the more you begin to remember the name Yahweh. And your children are going to come at you saying, I'm hungry. And you'll have to be able to tell your children, but it's the day of atonement. And your kid may be old enough, smart enough to say, but I have not sinned. I'm too little. <laughs> well, the day of atonement is to remind you to never sin. The Day of Atonement as a point of unity comes about because it's a shared experience. We experience great joy during the Day of Atonement because we understand that we will be purged free of our faults and that we can begin a wonderful new year of morality and righteousness. that whatever wrong we did this year, we can ask Yahweh to forgive us. Seek the forgiveness of Yahweh in whatever we neglected, our sins of omission, sin of commission, sin of ignorance, the unknown sins even. As you know by now, and some of you do not know, the Day of Atonement is observed on the 10th day of the seventh month, according to our solar calendar. And the purpose and the distinctive character of this day is to bring the collective sin of our nation, of all of our people even in America and around the world, into remembrance so that it may be earnestly dealt with and atoned for. And let us remember that some of Yahweh's righteous servants in the past, such as Job, always atoned for his children. Anybody recall reading that in Job chapter 1, verse 5? Let us turn to Job chapter 1, verse 
Let's read verses 4 and 5. Read. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned, and cursed Yahweh in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. This indicates that those of us who are conscious of Yahweh, his laws, statutes, judgments, commandments, are responsible for the sins of our people. It is not enough for us to return to Yahweh and be satisfied in keeping his laws while the rest of our family members are dead to the knowledge of their father Yahweh and dead to the knowledge of his laws thereby are breaking them. So we become responsible for every one of our people in America and all of our people around the entire planet Earth who are breaking the laws of Yahweh. And you might ask, well, how in the world can we be responsible or held responsible for anyone other than ourselves? Deuteronomy 32, 2 and 3. will shed light on that reality. Verse 1 tells you that we have an incredible responsibility. Read. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. All right. See who we're responsible to? We're responsible for all who are in heaven and all who are on earth or in earth. We're responsible for all who are conscious of Yahweh thus in heaven, conscious of Yahweh and obeying the laws of Yahweh who are thus in heaven keeping their minds stayed on Yahweh, enjoying perfect peace. Perfect peace is heaven. So those, we're responsible to them, making sure that they hear the law, and we're responsible for those of the earth, those who are carnal-minded, terrestrial-minded, who are suffering and languishing in death, because the ways of the carnal mind is what? Death. So we're responsible for all people who have an earthly mindset as well as to those of us who are consciously keeping the laws of Yahweh. Now let us read the next two verses and see what our responsibility is and how we meet our responsibility to those in heaven and on earth. Read. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew as the small rain upon the tender herb and as the showers upon the grass because I will publish the name of the Lord Yahweh ascribe ye greatness unto our God Yahweh now what is our responsibility publishing the name how many understand Publishing what? The name. the name. Am I publishing the name of Yahweh? Where in Dade County and Broward County and all am I publishing the name? 
All over? What do you see out in the public? Yahweh, the name, Yahweh in my picture. Oh, wherever you go, up and down in any street, you see somewhere, some corner, sometime, Yahweh. So am I keeping my duty yes, to publish the name? Yes, Can keep the name inside and meet this responsibility of being responsible for all of our sons and daughters who may curse Yahweh. And there are people who have cursed Yahweh in their ignorance. There are people who have said in their ignorance, well, don't nobody like Yahweh too much. Now, when someone says nobody likes, not some, but some people don't like Yahweh, what are they saying? That some people don't like the sovereign one. Some people do not like the creator. Some people do not like the giver of all good and perfect gifts. Some people don't like the one that gave them life. It has to be an ignorant person that says that. Being able to say some people don't like Yahweh means at least one thing has happened. The name has entered their head. That is a monumental achievement. To have the people of the earth who don't like the name call it. Have it in their head. Can pronounce it correctly. And then of course on the other side of the fence are all these people that just love the name. Then you know when you publish the name all over the world and in the heavens, you're guaranteed to cause a lot of curiosity. And when curiosity is roused, people will begin to pick up their dictionaries, encyclopedias, and Bible dictionaries, and some people will begin to research and look up this name. I found out on our trip around America in June, we reached the city of Baltimore, Maryland, and there were some people, there was a man that worked for the city, and he came down to give me a proclamation or some kind of an award or something from the city. And he shocked everybody in the building by expounding on the name Yahweh tripped us out. He was knowledgeable and said some things that many of you don't know about the name. He looked just like any ordinary fellow. He's never been here. He's never been to a temple and is not formally a part of me at this moment. But he loves the name. And when I came to his city, he came to see me and honored me and my work in the most precious manner by not only buying a ticket, but by expounding on the name that I publish. And it means many things. For example, that my enemies and my opponents have no idea of how many people have taken hold to this name because I publish it and they have learned for themselves some wisdom of the name and have learned for themselves some of the power and have respect and reverence for the glory, the honor, and, and the power in the name. And they have on regular street clothes. They have never worn white in their life. They may not own a white shirt. Yet they're walking around in love with Yahweh bin Yahweh, the name Yahweh. 
And I say that spells for a new day. It makes for a new day in America and it shows the power of publishing. How many have seen the name Yahweh lately around town in the public? You've seen it? I guarantee you that my enemies are upset. And they try to take it down. And they come back out tomorrow and it's right back up. In fact, it may be two in his place. And they put in the public newspaper that they were going to crack down on politicians and people who have their signs up so that they would have the excuse to come against me. And I told my disciples that what you have just read in the newspaper is just to prepare the public for them to come after me next week. And they did. I have received letters now from the State Department, North Miami, Homestead, with my name on it. Homestead versus Yahweh Ben Yahweh. For illegal signs being posted, I've received letters from somebody else too. Who was it? Transportation. And even their police officers who have on occasion stopped some of us and said, it's illegal to put the signs up. We say, well, what about the politicians? They say, well, you know, they do it. So he said, well, we're going to have to take it down. I said, well, I guess you're going to take down all the politician signs too. And, and uh, I guess that means you're going to take down some of these other signs that's been up on polls for now two or three years. <laughs> then they say, well, we only have three, to three people in our department. I say, well, I guess you're going to have a hard time. That's what we said. Because we are not going for and will not sit still for selective enforcement, harassment, or persecution for something that we have proof everybody's doing. Yet, you know, they've done it. And we'll deal with it. Glory to Yahweh. We were warned by some of our friends in high places that they were talking about it and plan to do that. And we gained some wisdom on what to do. And we will be following the wisdom of what Yahweh reveals that we should do because we know wisdom is a defense. Money they're not going to get, but wisdom is a defense. demonstrating that there are, are still a few white uh, there's a few racist white supremacists sitting in high places and those are the only ones writing those letters to us. In other words they are upset that you my people, number one suddenly the name is everywhere forces a controversy in the land because there is no truth or mercy in the land. Jose 4.1, here's what they're upset about. Jose 4.1. Read. Uh, Jose chapter 4, verse 1. Read. Hear the word of the Lord Yahweh, ye children of Israel. For the Lord Yahweh hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of Yahweh in the land. By publishing the name, I'm reaching out for all of my family members to return to Yahweh, your normal natural father, keep his laws, 
And if you come and listen to me, I will teach you how to move from poverty to riches. Your enemies do not want me to teach you how to move from poverty to riches. Do they know I'm able? Are they aware I know how? What's the proof? My works. So they know Yahweh bin Yahweh is not coming with a game. If I were coming with a game, I would be welcomed by everybody. But since I'm coming with the truth in the land, it means I'm coming with mercy. Where there is no truth, there is no mercy. Since I am the author of truth, I'm also the author of mercy. And since I come with mercy, <clears throat> I come with restoration powers. Verse 6. Read. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God Yahweh, I will also forget thy children. Proof of rejection is in verse 2. This is the condition of our people that I come with mercy. Read. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. Verse 3, read. Therefore shall the land mourn, and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish. Thank you. See what the condition of America is? It's not only America, but the world is in this condition. What condition? They languish. The whole world mourns. Well, that was promised. At my coming, that was promised. That the whole world would mourn. Matthew 24, 30. Matthew chapter 24, verse 30. At my coming, the world is in terrible condition. Blood, they breaking out with lying. Profanity, swearing, cursing, blood touching blood, killing each other, drawing blood of one another. Read. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven, with power and great glory. That's going to take place October 7th. <laughs> On October 7th, a sign is going to appear. Who signed? My sign, Yahweh's sign. A sign shall appear, huh, of the Son of Man. It's of me. Where? In heaven. In heaven. That's where I live. I live in heaven.
And when the earth see my appearance, and you better believe on October 7th, when I tell you the earth is going to be touched by me, huh? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, the earth, nations are going to be touched directly by me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then what's going to happen immediately, the whole what? The tribes of the earth shall rejoice. Why will the tribes of the earth mourn? At the appearance of my sign. All the games are up. I'm going to do that. I'm the only one who has it in the mind to do that. No one has the idea to do what I'm about to do. No one, if they thought about it, knows how to go about doing what I'm going to do. And I'm going to do it in a perfect manner. And I'm going to do it in a sign of completion. Hmm? And a baby is born in nine months. And I'm going to speak in respect to the completion and the number nine will be prominent in what I have to say and the earth will be touched. Whew, I'm trying to tell you. You are going to be wiped out of your mind. I don't wonder about this. Tonight you are hearing prophecy. Yes, yes. I'm so determined to bring this off that as of this moment, as of this moment, I'm on a 21-day fast. I will eat no food for the next 21 days. Perfect sevens, three times. Three times seven is 21. And all of you that moan over the lack of food for the next 24 hours, and who are going to rejoice at sundown tomorrow, you remember that I have 21 days to go. I'm, not, I'm really, I'm really going to do 21 full, complete days, and I will not eat until after the event, until I speak October 7th, which is on another perfect day. Seven. And you might think it's an accident, but it's on purpose. I may lose an awful lot of weight, but it will all be for you and the elect. It won't be easy. And I may need some of your help to get to the stage, but I'll be there. I plan to drink fruit juice and nothing else. And this is one of the most serious periods of my life. And I have an awful lot to think about. 
I have an awful lot to consider. And those around me who know me just a little bit have to be somewhat frightened, to say the least disturbed, And some of you have plans for me after these 21 days. You may even have plans for yourself after these 21 days. And I can assure you, Yahweh really is God. And you are going to be best served if you accept that reality and let yourself be in accord with whatever Yahweh wills and decrees. And you'll find yourself at the marriage supper with me. But if you're going into this day of atonement with future plans to sin, you're in trouble. All of you hear me? This is not just another day. You can see the armies that I'm gathering together in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, as I have taught you over the years. Which signals the end time. And there are two scenarios at this end time. One is Satan coming down with great wrath, knowing that he has but a short time. But for those of us who have studied the words of Yahweh, know that at the same time, the wrath of Yahweh is going to come down. And when the wrath of Yahweh comes down, he is going to be the victor. And all people who fear Satan and who love the ways of the heathen are going to be cast out where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. And those of us that choose to keep and obey the laws of Yahweh are going to look upon the devils and the heathens that are left and say, is this the man that caused the nations of the earth to tremble? Is this the man who has been cut and brought, cut down and brought so low? Is he one that, the one that we all thought could destroy? Yes, he has great wrath and he's ready to do it. You can tell, he's, he's ready to, to go. And I told you he's not going without a fight. But Yahweh is well able to fight. And I have a message on October 7 to the world. It's deeper and broader than what you might imagine. And all peoples will be there. Somebody from all of the people of the earth will be there. They're going to be there. And I have a message. There's only going to be one victor in this war of Armageddon. It gives those of us who have held on 
great faith and courage and great joy to watch what I have taught you over the years all come into pass. It lets you know Yahweh is real. And I warn all of us that you had better listen to what I'm saying and hear me well tonight. This is a time that talking to children and playing with your baby, you better put it aside and hear me. This day forward is not the time to put off keeping the laws of Yahweh. This is not the time to say I'll keep the laws of Yahweh next year. Now is the time to atone and make your move now. You don't have the time to play that you've had from the beginning of my teaching up till now. Don't you know and realize and understand from the word that this is not the time to let the cares of this world consume your mind? This is the period that could be most tempting to you to let the cares of this world take hold of your mind. The thrills and the joys of this world. And you'll be more dedicated to the cares of the world than you are building the kingdom and keeping the law of Yahweh. And to do so is to forget the promise of Yahweh wherein it is stated that people and even some of you among me will be like it was in the days of Noah that just won't realize until destruction take hold of you and sweep you away. Some of you have come too far with me to let the enemy of materialism and lust and, and the cares of this world to grab hold of you and consume you away from salvation. You've shed too many tears to suddenly let your heart grow cold to the laws of Yahweh. You've made too many sacrifices to come up to the point that I walk in my marriage chamber and I look around at you with pain in my heart and say, get away from me, you are a worker of iniquity. I cannot allow your mindset in heaven. You will corrupt heaven with your mindset. Now is the time to give up your mindset and take on the mind of Yahweh and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's what this Day of Atonement is seriously about. There are too many of us who have grown uh, kind of cool and, and, and our love for Yahweh and the word of Yahweh is waxing cold. You can find more time to dedicate days to your desire and don't dedicate the same time to the study of the word and the law of Yahweh. You are too busy to set a weekend aside to where you do nothing but stay up day and night in the law. 
but you can stay up day and night doing things that have nothing to do with Yahweh. Don't you know you make Yahweh jealous when you do that? Yahweh is looking at you. Yahweh is watching you. You don't have time to set aside the same time that you have for pleasure for yourself, for pleasure in the Word. Can't you see you're on the way to hell? You're on your way out from me. This Day of Atonement is a chance for you to make a new start, a new resolve, to come back to where you started from, to come back. It's a time where you can say to Yahweh, take me back, Yahweh. But when your heart and your mind is callous to what I'm saying now, and you set what I'm saying now aside in your mind, don't you see what's happening to you? That your lust is consuming you away from your creator? Can't you see yourself? My love for you says, wake up. If there was ever a day and a time that you who are in the sound of my voice need to atone right now for all that you've done this year, if you miss it, go on and write up that you don't really want to be in heaven. Write it up now. When I let you know tonight that I'm going on a 21-day fast, several spirits manifested themselves here. And I felt you who have the spirit of Yahweh within you absolutely calling out to me. And I could feel you. And I could feel your spirit saying, thank you, Yahweh. It's time. Some of you are saying, it's time. But not everybody here is saying, it's time. But then, my message is not for everybody. It's only for you that want the straight and the narrow way. That's who it's for. I carry a terrible burden when I teach for 12 years, 10 to 12 years, and then I look out and see people who have just forgotten what I teach. I shared today some wisdom with four or five people who went into shock at the things that I have taught over the last 10, 12 years, and I let them see books and, and, and things that I taught as much as six and eight hours a day on Shabbat. Uh, I used to teach like that. Every Saturday, it was all day. Take a break and have a little lunch, and then we'd come back and, and just study the law, nothing but the law, just the word, all day. And it was people, they had to love the word to do that. You had to love the word to keep coming and sit down all day long and just have your Bible open and I just take you from word to word and scripture to scripture and educate you and open your eyes. You had to be in love with the word to come week after week and month after month. And I know it paid off because I'm looking out at your faces now. There are many of you that are still sitting here now. That when the words of Yahweh were found, joy and rejoicing entered your heart. It is those teachings that gave you the foundation that you have that holds you here in spite of the adversity. 
It is your sitting day after day and night after night and, and, and reading and, and, and coming into new understandings of the word that's holding you here now that have caused you to say over the years, I come what may. The devil can shoot his best shot and when he finished, I'll be standing. Some of you remember, some of you have forgotten, and you remember now that I'm bringing it to your attention. Some of you remember how you used to just take your Bible out and take it out and just underline and, and, and study and underline, and, and different ones of you would get together and you'd study and underline, and you'd go to your houses together and open up the Bible and just study together on your own. You just did that. Same book. I said same book. Same book. Same book. Same book. Why don't you pick it up? Why have you made an excuse to set it down? Why do you work so hard for me that you're too busy to read about me? Don't you know when you're too busy and you're working so hard for me that you don't have time to pick up this book and your dictionary? You don't know what's happening to you? The devil works all day. Don't you know you can't fool me with telling me you working for me? I don't care if you wash clothes 22 hours a day. Every day of your life. And you spend the next two hours sleeping. I'm going to ask you one day, where's my word in you? When did you pick up my book? When you don't pick this book up, you're not picking me up. But you want me to believe you love me because you wash laundry 22 hours a day. For why you? For the Hebrews. You really think you have me fooled. I'm going to let you fool me up until I get ready to shut my door. And then I'm going to tell you, take your laundry washing behind to out of darkness. And may you enjoy washing clothes in darkness where there is no light because you were too busy for me. You worked too hard for me. So hard you never picked me up. Go ahead. Don't say then, remember how hard I worked for you? I pulled God duty for you, Yahweh Ben Yahweh, 22 hours a day. I only slept two. You think I'm going to say, well done, my good, and hard God pulling servant? And when I ask you something about me, you can't tell me where it is? You don't even know how to find it in the concordance. And you don't find a joy from me? All I can do is warn you. I, what do I look like coming, forcing you to pick me up? This that I'm speaking tonight is good. It's good. It's not bad. <laughs> the 
The principle of what I speak transfers to all of your lives. I'm open. I'm straightforward. I'm being honest. You can clean my house and where I live 22 hours a day. And, and there's no dirt in it. And everything I have is clean and crisp. And my bed is clean and it's crisp. All my dishes are clean and it's crisp. And every little physical thing that I need is there. And you've done it all, but you don't know me. And if I bring up the word to you, you tell me you don't have time for that because you're too busy cleaning my house. I want it clean for you. I'd rather clean it myself and see you into my word than to see you do nothing but clean it and don't ever be into my word. Because if you enter my word, you enter me and you'll be saved when you practice what you learn from me. But being into my bed, being into my house, being into my dishes, being into my closet is not going to save one of you. And I'm telling you, you can't fool me with all the work you do. If I don't see you into the word, you can't put it off on nobody else. It's every man's personal responsibility to pick up this book. I can't pick it up for you. Your mama can't pick it up for you. Your daddy can't pick it up for you. Job can pray for you because you may have cursed God in your heart. Job may pay for you as his child because you strayed. Job may atone for you. But I read with all of the atoning that Job did for all of his sons, Satan killed every one of them. Satan got every last one of them. Job was saved because he atoned. Job was saved because he was perfect. His sons were not perfect because he prayed for them. Just because I pray for you, I pet you, I help you, I bless you, that's not going to save you unless you perfect your own life. I'm telling you. I can see Job praying for his son. And I can see Job's sons watching him pray for them. And I can hear Job's sons saying, My father Job is a perfect man. My father Job hates evil. So I'm going to feel safe in his prayer for me. I, I'm going to feel safe and secure in Job's atonement for me. Job was saved and his sons were killed by Satan. Why? Because they were content to watch Job be perfect while they refused to be perfect. I refuse to demand any one of you here to be perfect. I teach you perfection and you have to choose for yourself to be perfect or imperfect. I'm not going to sit around and follow you to be perfect. I'm not going to set up a goon squad to follow you and beat you up because you are imperfect. I'm not going to waste one minute of my time following you nowhere on this earth to see and ensure that you be perfect. You will not be a part of my kingdom if I have to do that. I'm not looking for a society like the Islamic society where you have the women who have to wear long black garments and the world can't see nothing but their eyes and the men don't allow them to speak to no man outside of the home and where if the woman is caught in adultery, the man can kill her and not have any penalty and no trial. This is a situation of where women are forced to have the form of righteousness, but it's not in their heart. 
I'm not looking for a society where I have to force women to be right. I'm looking for the woman that wants to be right because she loves Yahweh and his law and his right to be right.